from surviving one of the most dangerous hoods in the US to becoming the youngest ever MVP in NBA history. These are seven things you didn't know about Derrick Rose. Now, where better to start than the very beginning? And calling the beginning of Rose's story difficult would be the understatement of the century. Sure, a lot of dudes in the NBA came up in dangerous hoods, but what D. Rose grew up in was just different. Derek was born and raised in Chicago, more specifically, the gang-ridden neighborhood of Englewood in the notorious south side of Chicago, an area so violent that it's caused the city to be known as Chirac due to there being more deaths from gunfire of US citizens in the city than the entire Afghanistan and Iraq wars combined. Inglewood is no joke man. Due to a combination of lack of investment in the community and the construction of the Dan Ryan Expressway that severely displaced communities and caused new residents to be forced to move right next to long-standing residents who didn't like them. Many businesses that provided jobs, goods, and pillars to the community left for other areas of the city. Redlining and blockbusting by crooked real estate agents also tanked the value of properties in the area, which led to a vicious cycle of continued flight of businesses and a self-fulfilling prophecy of urban deterioration in the area. Since the 1960s, Englewood has perennially been one of the top five most dangerous hoods in the entire US. Violence and drugs are rampant, and the area is plagued by constant fighting between gangs that were formerly allies and are now permanently warring, not to mention widespread drugs, vacant and deteriorating buildings, and urban blight. Picture it, police cars circling the blocks, abandoned cars without wheels parked in front of the latest eviction notice, empty and shuttered homes and vacant lots, funeral homes being the only open businesses, children without parents and any guidance outside serving rocks, or killing each other over gang beef that's older than they are. This was the reality that Rose inhabited. It was so bad that young Derrick Rose used to break down in tears every night, as almost anyone surrounded by such poverty and hopelessness would. Back in 2008, he shared this with us in an interview. When I was younger, I used to cry about how rough it was. I just wanted to be old enough to get me and my family up out of there. Now, growing up in a hood that averaged almost 300 violent crimes a month would have and has broken a lot of people to never make it out. But for Rose, he knew that he had to use it to be the exact opposite. The environment he was in was the push Rose needed to make it so big that he could save his family at all costs. And speaking of family, man, not only did our boy Derek grow up in the darkest of hoods, but he also did it living with a very, very very large family. When I say large family, you might think of a house or seven or eight coming to mind. Rose's family consisted of 13 people, all in a five bedroom house. And according to Derek himself, out of them 13 people, five or six of them was crackheads. So it wasn't just drugs and violence on the street. His own family was bringing that home and all around him. And it's not like the house they were all in was a roomy, spacious house of the middle class suburbia. They were so poor that Derek couldn't even afford a $2 pack of candy. So instead of eating sugary sweets from the store, Rose would get a cup and put the powdered sugar in there, then get a spoon and eat the powdered sugar straight up as his own type of candy. It's no wonder his family nicknamed him Pooh after Winnie the Pooh Bear, the Disney character, because of his sweet tooth. And despite these challenges of growing up in a less than suitable environment, Rose had one thing in his family that kept him off the streets and out of trouble, technically three things, and those were his older brothers, Dwayne, Reggie, and Alan. Rose was the youngest of the bunch, and the three of them took it upon themselves to train and mentor Derek on and off the court to push him to be the hell of a baller that we know today. His brothers would look out for him and make sure to the best of their ability that negative influences stayed away from him. They would literally have neighbors keep eyes on Derek at all times just to make sure he stayed out of trouble and away from kids and older gangbangers that could cause him to get roped into trouble. To date, the former Chicago Bulls star still gives all the credit to his older brothers for shaping him into the man he is today and protecting him from the dangers of the streets. His brothers must have been quite the mentors to groom an NBA Rookie of the Year and future MVP. And this next thing you didn't know about Derrick Rose is a testament to that level of toughness that they instilled in him. Now, back when D. Rose was a young kid on the streets of Chicago, he was already becoming a streetball legend in the city. He was so good and he balled out so much that he would play against and cook grown men 1v1 for cash. He would challenge and hustle them like a pro on the court, and then afterwards he would go get himself some candy and his family some food to help out. Now, during one of these many games on the hard concrete in the local park, Rose was going up for a rebound and got taken out of the air from under him by an opponent 
opponent. Rose hit the ground hard on his left elbow and completely shattered it. But get this man, Rose's love for the game was just different. Derek went to go see a doctor, got some basic treatment, had a cast put on his arm, and left the clinic. But rather than head home, Rose decided to return to the same basketball court that he'd just broken his arm out to play some more. It wasn't even six hours after breaking his arm, and he was back out there hooping with a cast on. Man, I can't say that was the smartest decision. And maybe having your older brothers as your coach isn't the best idea, because there's no way in the world a pro coach is going to let his player get on the court with a freshly broken arm. But that just shows the toughness and determination that Rose had, something the city had never seen before. I mean, there was nothing that was going to stop this kid from getting better on the court and from realizing his dreams of getting his family out the hood with basketball. Not that his mom would have appreciated that in the moment though. She would have whooped that dude's ass if she found out that he broke his arm playing and then went right back afterwards. So he had to lie to her that he broke his arm fouling out a tree so she'd keep letting him play ball. And there's endless stories about Pooh, the legendary streetball hooper in Chicago. But from this one alone, the entire community could tell he was a special kid and was destined for greatness. I gotta warn you though, what comes next is anything but cool. D Rose wasn't afraid of gangs, violence, or anything else that life could throw at him. He's seen it all growing up, so as he moved on through life, nothing he ever did in basketball could ever be as hard as him growing up. But despite all the things he's not afraid of, D Rose actually does have a few weird phobias. And don't get me wrong, being afraid of certain things is alright. We've all got phobias, but Derek's are surprised. Surprising. When you hear of a guy who grew up hearing gunshots every night regularly like it was the freaking ice cream truck and a guy who played basketball with a cast on his arm, you'd think he's the complete macho man. But even the biggest macho man can still be afraid of the tiniest insect. D Rose is terrified of spiders. And by afraid, we don't just mean like he prefers not to see those eight legged creatures or he doesn't like them. It's more like he almost broke his freaking leg jumping out of the shower once because he saw a spider. That type of fear, man. Vice Lords, BDs, Latin Kings, no problem, no fear. But a tiny little bug with eight legs and little pincers? And D Rose turns to jello. But that's not the only thing the 2011 MVP is afraid of. D Rose is also terrified of needles. Back in 2008, in Rose's lone college season at Memphis, he had just helped his team trash Michigan State on a Friday night. But during the game, D Rose had got a substantial cut over his eye. When Rose found out that he'd have to get stitches to close the cut, it became a whole drama. He was stomping around the locker room, yelling, ranting, and on the verge of tears just because he could not take needles coming close to him, especially close to his eye. It literally took the entire team holding him down and agreeing to glue the cut and forget about the stitches to calm Rose down. And to this day, he did not regret making a scene that day. Speaking about it a while later, he said, I'm terrified of needles. If I would have got stitches, they would have had to stick a needle right above my eye. So I was pouting, screaming, and stormed out of the locker room. I was mad, man. So just to keep the peace and keep my man D Rose happy, Keep them needles and spiders away, my guy. Now, this is complete conjecture on my part, but it's possible that he's afraid of needles because of the drug histories of the people that he was around. It's definitely possible D Rose sadly saw people overdose at a young age or lying in the street with needles sticking out of their arms. Knowing the upbringing he went through, it's not surprised that he's traumatized in that way. And as far as spiders, I don't really like them either. If you grew up in a ran down, broken up home and you had bugs all over the place, it makes sense that you'd be afraid of them. You probably didn't see that coming for a 6'3", 200 pound dude, but that's not all. You might think someone who went through what D Rose did growing up would be extra ultra hard. Like, I'm talking super thug, super tough, not friendly, not kind, just very cold and hard to the world. At least that's what a lot of people would assume. But even though Rose keeps a stone face on the exterior a lot of time, on the inside, he's a soft, compassionate man. And when I say soft, I don't mean that in a bad way at all. To start with, he's very quiet and humble. Even during his MVP season, back in 2012, Rose told GQ magazine that he doesn't really enjoy interacting with strangers. He'd rather just stay quiet and observe from the background and what he calls going stealth mode. Rose described himself as the shy type. That's why you see his game doing all the talking for him. But he's not just shy, man. He's got a whole lot of kindness, compassion, and want to help others in his big soft heart. And exhibit one of this is his charity foundation, the Derrick Rose Foundation, a nonprofit organization that helps the poor and the needy across Chicago access funds for developing trades, building new schools, 
and making important and strategic connections, amongst many other things. Impressive, right? That's not the only philanthropy my man's doing. In September 2014, for example, the three-time All-Star donated $1 million to the Chicago-based nonprofit organization After School Matters. This organization provides innovative, out-of-school programs for teenagers, which is something Rose strongly believes in. The idea is to keep kids occupied with productive and positive activities after school so that they don't fill up their time after school getting involved with the wrong type of extracurriculars. And guess what, man? There's more. Fast forward to August 2018 when D. Rose was on the Timberwolves. D. Rose donated $400,000 to create the Rose Scholars Scholarship Program that helps fund high school kids to pay for college tuition. Man, what a guy. And if you were shocked by the things that scared Derek, I bet you won't guess what makes him happy. I bet you didn't know that although ball is life for D. Rose, basketball is not his only love. We've often seen athletes participating in other sports, apart from the sports they're known for in their younger years, and others just have another sport they love alongside their normal trade. But for Rose, his favorite second sport is something that you would never guess. My guy is a pro ping pong player. Rose absolutely loves table tennis and can be said to be an avid player. My dude really gets down and he takes it serious. Can you imagine someone as quick and athletic as Rose whipping around the ping pong table, man? You could never get it past him. Other than that, D. Rose loves playing baseball. In fact, he once said that if he wasn't playing basketball as a career, baseball would have been his chosen sport. Who knows, maybe in an alternate reality, D. Rose would be the star pitcher of the Yankees instead of a guard for the Knicks. D. Rose has other things he loves to do in his spare time as well, though. He spends his free time reading novels as well as playing Rummy Cube. And remember the nickname Pooh? Well, you could still call Rose that because he never lost that sweet tooth. In fact, his addiction to candy is renowned throughout the NBA and is one of the most legendary candy addictions rivaling the likes of other famous candy addicts such as Dwight Howard. And although he's cut back on a lot of the candy compared to the ridiculous level it was at on the Bulls, he still indulges himself in a lot of Twizzlers and gummy bears. And when he's not eating these, he's treating himself to one of his favorite comfort foods from way back, grilled cheese. You can take the kid out the hood, man, but you can't take the hood out the kid. My dude Derek even once raised eyebrows when he went out to dinner at a fancy five-star expensive restaurant in order to grill cheese. What? Man, somebody get this man a kid's menu. <laughs> Next, you're going to order chicken tenders. And now that you know what sport he likes and what food he likes, you might be wondering who he likes. And we're not talking about romantic interests. Derek Rose absolutely adores and admires the actor Will Smith. Derek loves Smith's movies. His favorite is Seven Pounds. And he said that if a movie about himself was ever to be made, Will Smith has got to be the actor to play him. Now, most hardcore D. Rose fans know that he starred for one season at Memphis University before going to the league. But I bet you didn't know that choosing what college to go to for him was incredibly difficult. And he could have had an entirely different trajectory had he chose a different school. To this day, D. Rose said choosing a school was one of the hardest decisions he ever had to make in his life. Now, D. Rose was a high school basketball legend. Just go look up some of his old mixtapes if you haven't ever seen him play back then. He played for Simeon Career Academy in Illinois, and he was just something else, man. Not only did he finish his high school career averaging 25 points, 9.1 assists, 8.8 .8 rebounds, and 3.4 steals, but he also led his team to its first state title in years. But that's not all. The next year, Rose brought Simeon back to the state championship and became the first public school team in Chicago history to capture back-to-back -back state titles. His high school record with the Wolverines was 120 wins to only 12 losses. And in 2009, Rose was named the decade's third greatest high school point guard ever by ESPN Rise Magazine. With all these accolades and achievements before he was even 18, countless college programs wanted to recruit Rose. Big time schools like Indiana University, Kansas, the University of Illinois, and Kentucky all wanted to land him at the time. And for a long time, it appeared the obvious choice was the University of Illinois. Not just because it was his hometown State College, but they were also recruiting then five-star recruit Eric Gordon, another Chicago hoop legend who had played AAU basketball with D. Rose. However, that whole plan came crashing down when Gordon decided to retract his commitment from the university. And since his boy wasn't going there any longer, Rose chose Memphis's history of getting players into the league and the chance to be mentored by 17-year NBA veteran Rod Strickland over the hometown team. It was only one year he had there, but based on his future MVP season and his 300 million plus net worth, it's safe to say Derek made the right choice.